In today's live stream video, we're going to discuss how to sell plush on eBay and the other e-commerce platforms at more. Every Wednesday, I have a live stream, and I usually interview another reseller, and I have them share their tips, tricks, and techniques to help make us more profitable and successful resellers. So if you're a reseller, then you are in the right place. I'm going to pop in a chat and say hello to a few people. I know uh, Beth, Reseller Robo, was here earlier. Thanks for joining us, Beth. Uh, Glenn Swamp Picker is here. Thanks, Glenn. We have our guest in the chat, Robert. We'll be bringing him on very shortly. Randy, thank you, sir, for moderating. Wendy, always good to see you, Wendy. And, of course, Lisa, I appreciate you being here every week, Lisa. Appreciate you coming in. And uh, like, like I tell you guys, uh, feel free to chat amongst yourselves. Uh, again, I have an expert on Plush. We're going to talk in general about his reselling business, but we're going to concentrate on Plush. And we have time. We're going to also talk about toys. So uh, Robert is very good with toys. So we're going to talk about that. So if you have any questions, uh, well, I prefer you put like a Q in front of it, a capital Q. This makes it easier for me to spot questions. And uh, that way, if you guys are just chatting amongst each other, I know that, you know, if, if it's a Q in front of it, I know the questions from me. So anyway, let's uh, let's bring Robert on and have him introduce himself. Hello. 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 How's it going, everybody? Oh. Robert, why don't you tell the people that don't know you who you are, where you're from, and a little bit about yourself. Well, I am Robert the Zombie Bargain Hunter. Um, Better known as the Plush King, from California. Uh, been selling on eBay for about 21 years now. Started way back. Um, video games, actually. My store was called Xbox Games and More. <laughs> so, um, started way back. What 2000, 2001. So, been on eBay a long time. <laughs> Went from video games to what was I selling? I was selling. Uh, jewelry, then I went to clothing, then I went to purses, then I went to neckties, and then around 2008, 2009, that's when I found uh, the plush. So that's where I've been ever since. And now I'm huh. dabbling in action figures now. Okay, yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't aware that you, you had sold clothing and, and, and uh, you know, ties and that type of thing, and jewelry even. I have a bunch of jewelry. That's, that's, another, that's another thing. That's on me. <laughs> I was really active a lot of the jewelry reselling chats, and then I was buying stuff <laughs> to try to help support the other resellers. It's like, you know, it's jewelry. I had nothing about jewelry, but yeah. Well, in uh, 2008, when the housing market crashed, I used to be a house flipper. So, uh, when the housing okay. market crashed, uh, I was building a house and I lost $150,000 that one year. Oof. So, I scrambling, I had a vending business on the side, I had 300 vending machines. So, that kind of helped along. So, I was scrambling, didn't know what to do. I knew eBay was fun to do because I was just doing it like one or two. Uh, pieces at a time so right. i knew how to do ebay so i just jumped right in i actually purchased out a jewelry store um the first year <laughs> um that went okay jewelry is super hard to do well at least for me there was just so much out there i didn't know what i was doing so when i purchased the jewelry store i'm like oh, i don't really like jewelry and then i found a company that sold purses I'm like, all right, they have hundreds of purses. Let's purchase this <laughs> purse store. Went into purses. And then um, then I did the whole route of Marshalls, Ross, and... The retail arbitrage. Yeah, yeah. all those clothing I'm items. Try, I've been trying that too, and I've been striking out lately. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it wasn't fun for me. I still have some clothes left over. And then I found a video. Um, well, it was on TV. I found just... Someone just mentioned... Hey, this plush sold for this amount of money. I'm like, okay. So my grandmother went into a home that happened to be right by a thrift store that sold bags and bags of plush for a buck. So I went in there, pretty much bought the thrift store out. <laughs> I had a wow, here, whole here. wall full of plush. <laughs> Didn't know what to do with it. Started listing it, started selling it, and met Star from the Flippin' Hippos and became the plush king. <laughs> Started making a good living selling plush, and that's where I've been ever since. So you're again. I, I know you're a big believer in like buying in bulk. I mean, but that's yeah. obviously <laughs> the, you're you're at the point where you can you can do that because you're generating enough income that you can buy things in bulk, and you're you're putting aside obviously money to purchase. Oh yeah, the I actually inventory. lucked out right before the the shutdown. I I contacted a Goodwill. I got in touch with the manager, and uh, he sold me ten Gaylords of plush, which. You don't know how big a 10 Gaylords is. Wow. I got 88 bags of green trash bags full. That's not counting the big ones that were in the the in the, the Gaylords. But I had right. 88 bags, huge, like green waste trash bags 
in my living room of plush. Wow. I have a video of that if you guys want to see it. It was amazing. It it took from I was up at eight in the morning. I didn't go to bed. I think till like eight in the morning the next day doing that because I had to drive to Vegas and back. I was I was going to ask you how, how did you arrange that? Did you were you picking that up like you had a truck or did you have? Yeah, did you... I had a huge. I had to rent a, a big a old truck and they just okay. dumped it in there. And then I had to drive back home, get it emptied out the same day, or I would get charged for the truck again the second day. So, and I did that all by myself. I mean, it was an adventure. It was fun, but I, 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 we're going to talk a little bit about networking a little bit later on the show because I tried to bring that up because I think that's important in reselling or any business really. Uh, how did you find out about that? I mean, typically they say you know make connections with the with the managers of your local Goodwills or your thrift stores. And how did you find out that they had that uh, bulk? You know, purchasing available well, um, every time I would go to Vegas um, on vacation or whatever I would always go to the bins and when I go to the bins okay. um, they had a nice selection of plush so I would always come out with two three carts full every single day that I was down there so I'd be down there a week and fill up my SUV um, okay. pretty much every month so finally the um, I was always talking to the manager and finally the manager came up to me and said hey um, we have an excess of plush. We're actually, we've been destroying it. They've actually been compressing it. They've been wow. destroying it. They, he's like, hey, you want to buy these Gaylords? I'm going to have 10 extra that they're probably going to be destroyed. So I got 10 Gaylords. I believe I wound up paying $1,500 for it. So 88 bags of plush for $1,500. I'm like, okay, <laughs> can't beat that. Well, uh, I didn't know well, what the quality it was or anything. Right. I mean, well, some of it was really bad, but. Well, ballpark, how many how many units would you say it would be in the, those uh, Gaylords? Oh, well, a bag will hold probably 150, so 88 times that. Well, I can't even do the math. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm telling you. Uh, like, uh, I think I think it's over 1,200 if I'm doing my math a, right. But yeah, garden waste trash bags. So, so you you, you, a you paid a little. In it. You paid a little more than a dollar per piece, basically. I guess is what it worked out to be. Eh, so not that right. much. Not even that much. Okay. No, well, 88 bags, 150 in each bag. Okay. Not even close. <laughs> okay, yeah, 10 or 15. I ain't okay. doing, I'm not doing the math. Yeah, I'm not doing the math. I have to break up my calculator. I want to do that. <laughs> used to be real good with we'll math. We're here the end of the show so. trying to do the math. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. I, always, I always joke around when there's other shows, and I thought I said, well, there'll be no math in this show. So. <laughs> <laughs> and they had huge animals like this guy, <laughs> like three times the size of this guy. I mean, huge bears. I wish I had one here. But I mean, the, the bear is okay. the size of a person. Then I didn't even count those. Those were like on the side of my whole okay. <laughs> TV on the other side. It was just crazy. But I was selling those for like 80 bucks a piece. So it was really nice. Okay. Well, that, there, there's your answer, right? If he was selling them for 80 bucks and wants to know, was it worth it? So uh, I guess oh, it was, yeah. right? Yo, yeah. It was way worth it. it. It got me through the pandemic and everything else. It was So this amazing. is what, early two, 2020? Right before it hit. Okay. I All picked right. it up and they shut down that day and they're, they're like, oh, we'll open up for you. Okay. okay. So it was right then. It was perfect timing. And then when I ran out of there, I actually started cold calling different companies and wound up with a Wild Republic contact. And I bought, per I purchased a, a huge bulk lot from them directly. Okay. So you bought bulk lots from them directly. Okay. Yeah. I just started cold call calling companies, Dandy, Wild Republic, uh, Lego. Lego, I got some plush, but I didn't get a, a hold of the, the main guys. So didn't get as good as discount as I did with the Wild Republic. But right. yeah, I barely started talking about Wild Republic because, well, I was trying to sell the stuff. So, uh, But yeah. yeah what are your most recent like, videos you were talking about Wild Republic? Yeah. I, like I said, I just barely started talking about it because right, I'm right. almost out of it. Uh, and I okay. purchased, I think it was like, two or three thousand dollars worth and it was just a massive amount that they just didn't know what to do with because it was it was shut down nobody was buying nothing right yeah and that now now things have changed i mean a lot, a lot of you know e-commerce sites were, were booming back in the day uh I, I share my channel you know for like over 30 years i was in a wine and liquor business in retail and wholesale and back into retail and uh, that, that was really booming during the pandemic because people were home and they were drinking you know since so, so yeah. now it's kind of slowed down but now and then there was the the, the, uh, the like the backlog of all these shippings of product coming over from China and logistics, you know, getting things, you know, yeah, offloaded. And so now all these these retailers have all this inventory and stock that yeah, was all backlogged. Yeah, all the blocked for that time. And I mean, and now it's so like much. it's hitting, and it's like they're not doing as much business. Like, what do we do with it? So uh, 
you know, I mentioned a couple times you were talking about Randy this in my chat, and Randy was telling me there's there's some great deals out there because these these companies they're not going to buy they're not buying all the stuff they're re- yeah. refusing all this inventory and they got to sell it. Yeah, I, that's why I contacted him directly and got a few um, people to sell to me. Okay, Wendy has a. Uh, I'm going to. I'm just going to get into that, uh, Wendy. Um, that's one of my questions. You read my mind, and one of my. <laughs> I, we do have a section about shipping, so I'm going to talk to Robert about shipping. And uh, this is a side note. Uh, Robert ships uh, internationally too, so we're going to talk yeah. a little bit about that. So uh, just shipped to China a few days ago. Yeah, I, I don't know if I was shipped to China, but I, I heard that. It's like, oh, he shipped I've to never China. shipped to China. <laughs> <to> find out. <laughs> Guess you'll find out. I right? wasn't shipping to Mexico before, but a lot of my sales have been coming through. About ten percent of my. 10 to 20% of my uh, international sales have been coming through Mexico. They're getting some money down there, and I haven't had any problems. Yeah, and let's try this. We enjoy selling plushies. Yeah. That was, that was another thing. I want to get into that a little bit later, guys. So, what, what I try to do, I tell you guys, I mean, uh, I've been doing this for a long time, live stream. So, to let the chat fill in a little bit. So, uh, again, thank you, Wendy, for putting the queue in front of your questions. If you have any questions for Robert, you know, put a queue in front of it. So, we're just going to talk about his reselling business in general, and then we're going to get dive deep into the plush. But I wanted to have the chat fill up a little bit more before we get into the, why I call it the meat and potatoes, because uh, I, I eat meat and potatoes. <laughs> so, okay. All right, let's get to the next section here. Uh, I talked to you on a pre-interview about, about what e-commerce platforms are you selling on. And uh, predominantly, you were on eBay, which you had mentioned in your your yes. uh, you know pre, pre-show pre uh, talk. But uh, you recently started selling on Macari, Poshmark, Depop, and Facebook Marketplace. Why don't you tell us a little bit about those platforms and you know why you decided to sell on those platforms? Um, well, Mercari, I've been selling on for a while. Um, okay. Not a ton of stuff, but uh, since I started, well, since I got my connection with action figures, I heard action figures fly off the shelf of Mercari. So um, found this place called Resale Kit, and it really nice and really easy to cross post over there. And that's the platforms they, they work with. They work with Depop. Poshmark, uh, Facebook, and what was it, Mercari. <laughs> okay. no, yeah, no, they, you, they work with them. And um, yeah, it's super easy to cross post with them. I just started on the rest of them. Mercari have been on for like two years. Uh, the rest of them, I just barely started maybe two months ago, if that. Um, Poshmark, nah, not a real fan of Poshmark. Uh, selling on there off and on for a couple of years. Cause I used to have ties and I've talked about the purses and stuff like that. So I put those on Poshmark, but they really didn't fly. I wound up just donating the ties. It was just a nightmare <laughs> on Poshmark. Okay. But yeah. Um, Depop, it hasn't been very good for me, but like I said, I've only been on a few months. Yeah. I was going to ask you, I mean, I mean, obviously I've heard, I mean, I've been reselling for about four or five years now. I heard of Depop. What, what type of things sell typically on Depop? Um, it was mostly like clothes. Mostly. That's what I thought was I clothing. That's why I was like, surprised. Yeah, I have a few like clothing items left over. Okay. okay. Um, I had it. There was a huge sale on GameStop where I bought one shirt and got one free, and there was clearance, so I got tons and tons of shirts for like three dollars and two dollars a piece. So okay, I I put those on uh, Depop and Poshmark, and those sell a little bit. So far, Depop has been kind of like a waste of my time. <laughs> uh, Facebook Marketplace. Um, for locals, it's really nice. I've sold a bunch of like uh, Pokemon items. I sold a watch. I sold some big items on Facebook Marketplace. So that is nice. But other than that, Depop, not a fan of Depop. Bonanza, by the way, has been picking up. Really? I okay. sold a few hundred dollar items on Bonanza. Usually when I sell on Bonanza, it's the high dollar items. I don't know why, but okay. it's weird. I sold a, like a hundred and something dollar plush like last year. And I'm like, really? And I sold, a, it was $125. Uh, it was Squishmallows, the lock, shock, and barrel from Nightmare Before Christmas. That set sold on Bonanza. I think it was like $125. So weird. <laughs> they don't buy the cheap stuff, but they'll buy the expensive stuff. You, you talked earlier about, about doing retail arbitrage. And I, I went when I was running my errands and, you know, hitting the wholesale club. And, you know, with the price of gas, I try, I tell people I try to, you know, wrap myself, you know, go, go to the, you know, to the bank, go to the wholesale club, go to this, that, and the other. And then I, I went to Walmart for the toy clearance. Uh, have, have you had any success with, I mean, everybody's yelling about, oh, it's great deals at Walmart. I typically don't have that much success at Walmart clearance, but have you shopped Walmart clearance for toys? I shop every clearance. Um, okay. I follow a website called uh, slickdeals.net. 
And there's a few other like Facebook groups that I follow. Okay. So okay. I buy hundreds of games at a time or I'll buy. That's why I found the T-shirt sale from GameStop before they even did it in store. So if you follow Slick Deals, put in what you're looking for, it'll pop up a lot of things. Okay. And it'll give you alerts when the, the thing comes ap- active that you're looking for. So I've purchased... Uh, Pretty much anything okay. <laughs> from new plush. Well, I just found uh, I think it was like ten different new plush. There was a, it was a, what was it? It was a, oh man, I'm trying to <laughs> I drew a blank. Uh, but there was ten different new plush that just came out. Uh, Peppa Pig, that was one of them. There was a Lilo and Stitch. There was Forky from uh, uh, Tomb. What is it? Uh, Toy Story. And there was a whole bunch of them. They were like on sale for a couple dollars a piece, brand new. So, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised. I mean, like you were talking about squishmallows. We'll get into this, you know the plush obviously in a few minutes here. But uh, I was, was, you know, scanning them. And, and the guy, just just a reminder, most of you in my chat right now are experienced resellers. I am trying to grow my channel, and hopefully, I will get some more you know, newer resellers in the chat. But uh, make sure you download the uh, the Walmart app on your on your smartphone so yeah. that way you can scan things. Because a lot of times the price on the item is not the same as what is scanning in the store. And, and every store is different as far as clearance too as well. Yeah, I'd rather do it online because I, cause I can order like 10 to 20 of each item. Right. Instead of going to every store and gotcha. finding one or two items and go to the next store. It's way more. It's less time consuming. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, yeah I agree. And I, I've, I've done some, some, and again, the thing is, it's easier to do online arbitrage, especially yeah. with the price of gas. And like you said, you, you can buy in bulk. And you don't have uh, to deal with people. Sometimes people just like, <laughs> you have 20 in your cart. No, we don't want to sell to you. I'm like, but they're here to sell. Right. <laughs> you especially want to especially sell like them. The places like <laughs> Target, they, they kind of. I've problems with Target before. That's oh why my I just God. bring it up. Target. Yeah, they discourage yeah. resellers. Yeah. My Target is great. I, I put yeah. like 20 games in my cart manager no fine with it no problem but yeah okay. i heard a lot of resellers say nope we have a reseller policy don't don't sell the resellers right okay <laughs> and we won't buy from you <laughs> well i one of my questions was was your business model but you, you pretty much addressed that you said you do sell one also you do buy things in bulk and sometimes yeah. you'll buy you know do online arbitrage and buy you know multiples of an item so yeah. uh anytime, you I predom- make, anytime i can make good money on anything i'll buy it but right now you predominantly sell uh, plush and toys, correct? Yeah, plush toys, action figures. Action figures. Okay. Are you still involved with video games at all, or not really? Um, they kind of died for me. Um, okay. I used to have a ton of Game Stops, and a lot of them closed. And then I was buying out Game Stops. I knew the liquidator. Well, I got to know the liquidator. So I I purchased out what eight stores during during the shutdown. So I purchased. I well, okay. completely bought the whole stores. <laughs> So I had a ton of games at one time. So um, my games are pretty much gone now. Uh, unless another GameStop or two closed pretty soon, I don't have any games really. So when again, we're, we're talking about networking and, you know, making deals and things. Yeah, um, I'll talk so, to anybody. <laughs> so, so you reached out to the liquidator and uh, were they giving you like deals over and above what the, the typical prices would be? Uh, what it was is I talked to, I, I knew the manager of GameStop since I dealt, I deal with so many GameStops mm-hmm. over the years. Gotcha. I used to go, um, when there was a sale, I would hop to 35 different GameStops in a weekend to pull all this product and all the inventory they had that was on sale. And they would right. hold it for me. So right. uh, I became friends with a, a, one of the managers and his store was closing down. And he, he came up to me. He's like, hey, the liquidator's coming in about a couple hours, you want to talk to him about a bulk buy in my store? I'm like, all right. So I purchased his store for 80% off. Uh, I just purchased the whole store. And then he's like, hey, I have another store over here. Um, and it was like a test. So <laughs> I passed the test. I purchased almost the whole store, uh, whatever could fit in my truck. And once that happened, then I got store after store after store. Uh, what I found out later from one of the associates that um, one of the purchasers that, or one of the buyers that was supposed to purchase the store was a real um, ass. <laughs> That's like difficult to deal with. Yeah. <laughs> Quote <unquote. laughs> that I couldn't think of a better word. <laughs> okay. So he didn't want to deal with them anymore. So me being nice and to the liquidator paid off. And I got that store for 95% off. 
and I got this next store for 95% off and so on and so forth. Wow. Okay, so you so went I from 80 out. to 95% off. Wow. Yeah, so I cleared out, I think it was eight stores I wound up clearing out. Wow, that's tremendous. Wow. So guys, I, I'm always talking about, we're going to talk about a little bit later about networking and some of the things you'd benefit from. So always keep that in mind. I know it's a little crazy now with the pandemic and everything, but try, try to be friendly with people. Try to... You know, just say hello. I mean, sometimes, I mean, it's simple. Sometimes it's knowing clerks or managers at, at your thrift store. Or they'll, they'll yeah, keep I've stuff in the back room for you. Before. Um, got to know the, the Disney store manager. Um, they would hold product in the back for me, knowing that I was coming back like the next day or so. And they had like a clearance 80, uh, 80% off, or already the 50% off. So they would hold all this product back for me. And I'd say, I'll take it all. And they would hand it all to me. And I would get items for one or two dollars, and I'm still selling some of that to this day. I show that on my what's sold videos every once in a while. Okay, is there is there anything special that you do? I mean, uh, just you know, talk and I... be nice to people. And okay. I'm straight up front. I'm a, I'm a reseller. Um, going to resell this. Do you have any more stock in the back? Are you willing to sell to me? If not, I move on. If oh yeah, we have so much stock. Uh, we want to get these boxes out of the way. Please come back. That's right. what most of the time I get. <laughs> okay. Uh, guys, I, I always want to remind you, too, that uh, we're going to talk about towards the end of the video about you know Robert's uh, uh, YouTube channel and the type of videos he does and all. But I always want to remind you, folks, I always put the uh, the, the information about my guest one in my description section of the video. So I do have uh, Robert's eBay store and also his YouTube channel in the description center so uh, of the video. So I want to just... Touch a little bit, and I'm going to hop in, you know, full force on the uh, plush. I want to just touch a little bit on your eBay store. I did go to your eBay store, and you are running sales, correct? Yeah, I run a 15% off sale. Well, I jack up the price 15% off, then I run a sale, of course. And I do free shipping, too, so. Okay, so that was one of my questions. I mean, I always ask about free shipping or not, and I guess, well, it depends, too. I mean, if you're shipping, we'll get into shipping, too, a plush. Wendy, we're definitely going to get into that. But if, if something is, is pricey to ship, do you build it into the cost and then offer free shipping, or do you have sometimes it varies? Um, I always build it into the cost. Um, when I since I sell so many uh, multiples, okay, uh, free shipping works out great for me. I make way more money on free shipping. For example, if uh, an item is ten dollars and it's five dollars shipping, I just put the item at fifteen dollars, and if two sell, I get thirty bucks. And I, I keep the extra five dollars for shipping. If it wasn't free shipping, then um, you usually lose the five dollars because they'll ask, "Hey, can you combine shipping?" So. Right. So, so do you have that in your store that you you have you know offers for you know for for multiple uh, combining? I guess what they call it. It's five percent. Uh, it's, uh, <laughs> oh, it's five percent. Okay. So if you okay. buy do you buy two items, it's five percent. So, so somebody bundles something, it's okay. okay. Yeah. It, but then I sometimes mean, I guess they'll probably reach out to you privately through the eBay messaging system, and or is that just five percent cut and dry as well? Yeah, it's just I, I have offers on. So if someone wants to offer me something, okay. yeah, I'll take I an you. offer every once in a while. I, I was just curious if everybody does things a little bit differently. And yeah, I have so offers on like, all my items after thirty days. So uh, do, you, do you pulse? Them? I'm sorry. What? Do you pulse your sales off and on, or do you always keep like a like a flat sale all the time. Flat sale. I, I do okay. it every 30 days. I just reset it every single 30 days. Okay. So, okay. like tomorrow, I'll have to reset it. <laughs> right. Every first of the month, I'll reset it. And do you like with the Labor Day, we can come up. We, would you, will you call it like Labor Day sale or something, or just, just leave it the way it is? Yeah. yeah? Oh, <laughs> okay. I'm just it's curious. There. I just push copy <laughs> in and I redo it. I, I got you. I got you. Okay. All right. Uh, I wanted to talk about, and we, you had mentioned earlier, and uh, Wendy had talked earlier about the uh, the resale kit. So you told me that you had uh, over 4,000 active listings currently, and you had them on eBay. And you, like we talked earlier that you had added some other e-commerce platforms. And you said that you're using resale kit app, which I had never heard of before. I told you that. Uh, why don't you talk a little bit about the app and why you decided to use it? And uh, you have a link as well in your, uh, your videos to the resale kit. Um, well, I was looking for something way cheaper than List Perfectly. This Perfectly went from $30 to $60. And I'm like, no, I'm not paying six, uh, $720 a year to stay with List Perfectly. So started searching around, found Resale Kit. And with Resale Kit, it was only, um, I think they raised the price a little bit, but it was only, it was $69 for 200 or 2,500 uh, cross posts. And now I think it's like 75, well, I wrote it down, 75.90 for 2,500 cross posts, 
which one cross post you can do for all all their platforms. So I was one... surprised. I was surprised about that. I <laughs> actually did a little research on it. So if you if you cross post something, it'll, it'll cross post all those different platforms, and it's not like a fee for each individual individual no, e-commerce sites. It's a one time thing. For one. So yeah, one that's, goes that's to that's Depop, rare. it goes to Mercari, it goes to Poshmark, uh, Facebook Marketplace. They just added. So yeah, so twenty five hundred credits will actually cross post most stores absolutely so yeah that i saw that and i'm like all right i'm gonna try this and then when they came out with uh what when they you can remove the items after they sell they automatically remove that's when i was sold i'm like yeah i need this yeah because- people people I, I i bring that up all the time on my show because you know it, it pays you to be on multiple sites because you never know where something's going to sell like you say even Everybody complains about Bonanza, but you said you're doing well with Bonanza. Yeah, I'm so uh, how, how I mean, does some the, years uh, I don't do well, and then all of a sudden pops. <laughs> okay, how do, how does that work with with the pulling down? Is that like they, they like they they check your store every so often, or how does that work? Um, as long as when you open the app, it'll start just checking all what's sold, and then it'll pull it down off of the other ones that didn't sell. So you say when you open the app, so you have to yeah, open you have the to app. Have the app open it doesn't the automatically app. pull it down. Okay, unless you have the app open all the time. Now, do, do they have a smartphone app and a, and a, and a PC? Not yet. Or... Not okay. yet. They, they so what, just have it on the desktop. I have it here, right here, on my desktop. Just and... on the desktop. Yeah. Okay. So if you're if you're out selling and you get a a cha ching for eBay, uh, and you don't have and your then computer, somewhere else, you're, then you're in trouble. <laughs> okay. Okay. So that that's why that's why I wanted to ask you about that because that's that'll be like the. Uh, uh, the golden goose, so to speak, when you can do that, if you have an app, you know, on the phone yeah. and well, something sells on on eBay, oh, I, I got to, I got to take that off or something sells or wherever, because you don't want to get that, you know, the ding on eBay for not having inventory, whatever. Yeah. I just ship it to eBay and say, sorry, Mercari, <laughs> what am I going to do? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's just what most people do, but oh, okay. sorry, Poshmark. Yeah. Okay. So it's just a desk, it's desktop only right now. Yeah. I just turn it on once or twice a day and let it run its process and that's it. It takes them all down and I mean, every once in a while it misses one or two, but it's not like list perfectly where they don't take down anything. They That's make you do everything right. manually. And right. with 4,100 items or so, I can't monitor that. So you also told me that you get 50 additional credits, I guess, every every month? Every month, yeah. You get 50 free. Just log in and you get 50 free. So try it. I yeah, mean, Absolutely. And then you know, just use your link of what I think we said they get they get so many they get an extra fifty so you get a they get an extra fifty and you would get a little extra fifty or something well, people with a hundred <laughs> only a hundred in their store get their whole store across posted yes. for free so guys you know check out we're going to talk about obviously Robert's uh, YouTube channel at the end of, end of the show but you know check out his uh, description section of his videos and uh, you know, if, if you if you want to cross list and you want to try resale kit I mean it, it seems like it's uh, like an up and coming yeah I don't get paid for it so I, I just yeah it's really not an affiliate like link but I mean it, it helps you know they get extra I would extra actually get paid by uh, uh, list perfectly I do have an affiliate link with list perfectly I just I rather I prefer resale kit you, know? you should reach out to I'm resale straight people. out and honest with them. <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm not that I'm an expert, but I'm going gonna, gonna to recommend you. you should reach out to Resale Kit. Maybe they can sponsor some of your videos. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Seriously. I mean, I, I do a lot. I tell, you, I tell the folks on my channel, I do a lot of research on YouTube and it should be bigger, but that's that's another story. But anyway, that's, that's something to look into. <laughs> they, we all they be bigger? <laughs> well, yeah, well, I, I bigger belly, but I'm a bit well, bigger. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, so I down, so. okay, gotcha. Okay. Uh, all right. So, um, Let's get into uh, one other thing, and then we're going to pop all in, into the um, into the uh, push. Uh, you said that on your videos that you listed over 150 items in one day. So you and I were talking a little bit about that. Uh, how do you get that many listings done in a day? Do you have templates? Do you batch like items together? What are you doing to do that? Um, I actually have a video on that if um, anybody wants to check that out. But um, what I do is I sell similar. I use my I use the business policy, so all that automatically fills in. Um, spelled a little bit different. <laughs> Swamp. I'm reading. Uh, right, right, yeah, a little bit different. Yeah, but that's fine. Uh, but yeah, I, I use the business policy, so all the nonsense fills in basically. And you just have to fill out the price and change a little bit things around. I just. Uh, Sell similar. Anything that's uh, that's sold, I go by that. I go by what's sold at a decent price. Sell similar and go from there. And but you I also have, you also have templates, like you said, you try to batch things like like all like like say you had video games, or you have plush, all the types. Yeah, if I have like a hundred or one, like Snoopy plushes. 
like I had a hundred Hello Kitties one day. I was talking to right. Star, and I'm like, oh, I got this bag of Hello Kitties. It wound up being a hundred. So I did. I'm like, I'm getting rid of this thing in one day. And so I just made. Uh, I did the cell similar, and then I just pushed on uh, copy, and I copy. I, I copied a hundred of them, and just one at a time, filled it all out. And uh, since Hello Kitty rarely ranges in prices that differently or that drastically. Right, um, I could just bang them out. I just put them for like eighteen dollars, and okay, they were done super fast. Oh, there you go. Okay, I mean not that fast, but yeah, <laughs> so, <laughs> the but yeah, right. Okay, uh, let's let's get into the plush now. Let's uh, the chat's kind of filled up, and we figure get a little bit into the show. Uh, why don't you explain to us what to look for when we're, when we're outsourcing, whether it be at thrift stores or yard garage sales, swing markets, etc. Uh, Grant, you're a plush expert, so you, you kind of know it secondhand. But, but what should we be looking for? Uh, what I look for is different. Anything different. Um, I mean, people have purchased all this stuff at one point. So um, if it's not listed on eBay, you're going to get some good money for it. I mean, pe- things with stars on it, things with colorful items that don't even have a brand name. I mean, anything really different um, will sell. I mean... I can say you uh, have some this little that... guy. This guy is <laughs> just a weird little grandpa guy. I would pick him up before I pick up a uh, Mickey Mouse. Just anything different. And this guy, he's a uh, he's got a weird, I don't know, like a weird <laughs> hair to him. He's from the Loud House. He's actually uh, Nickelodeon. Okay. But yeah. He, he's completely different. Oh, this duck. I showed you the duck earlier. You showed the duck earlier. Yeah. Yeah. It, just completely different. I'd pick him up before I pick up a, a normal Snoopy or a normal pretty much any character. Uh, anytime I'm looking for plush, I'm looking for different. Okay. Uh, you also talked about uh, recently in one of your videos um, about video game plush. And you also said to look, somehow they have some this was counterfeit ones as well. And they also, you said something, they have some, a one-time use added value. What was that, the DLC code? Could you oh, yeah. Um, video a little games, bit what that is? Yeah, video games um, themselves usually have like a DLC code when they're, um, they're in the, the case uh, where you just scratch them off and you, you put them in the system and they add like a gun or a different character or something like that. And actually, they can be attached to video game or, or video game plush. Okay. So yeah, the plush can have like a little. So it's like an it's extra, like if you have like a, a, I don't even know what they. I don't play video games, but I mean they they have like an action thing. And they might have an extra weapon. Yeah. So if you if Gans you like total off of the. Uh... Yeah, Gans Webkins is well known for that. They every single one has a different like uh, code in it. I don't know what it's for. I guess I should have checked it out. But okay. uh, if they're sealed codes, people will want them. I guess there's some kind of game or something they okay. they have with the the Gans Webkins. Also, Club Penguin has uh, something like that. But pretty much all the like main video game uh, companies will do like a promotion and the, they'll give it away at Comic Con or something like that, and they'll include a code which again get you a gun or a different character or a different outfit something that you can't get elsewhere so alone i've sold a code for a hundred dollars without even the plush they're like cut the the code off send me the code i don't even want the plush and so then i have, go ahead have, and resell the plush for fifty dollars or whatever so you have to assume that the code's been used obviously if you buy something used you want to make sure to tell the people it doesn't yeah doesn't if, have if that you code. can actually see any part of the code don't sell it as uh because even if, if it's not used, the guy's going to say it's used. <laughs> right, right. Absolutely. Yeah. You're going to send it to him. He's going to say, ah, oh, this thing was used. And how can you refute it? And you just can't. Yeah, you can't. Yeah, you can't. Well, I can't prove it, right? Absolutely not. Yeah. Right. So you, you were talking also about, you said something like the really like ordinary looking plush or, or counterfeited, like especially on video games. Well, what, what's yeah, that all there's about? A, there's a lot, especially Five Nights at Freddy or anything really expensive. Um, I have these huge Five Nights at Freddy dolls, but I went to the swap meet, like, I think it was uh, a month ago, and there was a whole wall of just nothing but counterfeit ones where their eyes, like, off or <laughs> their nose is different, and they all say Made in China in the back. There's no brand name. There's no Funko. There's no Five Nights at Freddy branding on it or nothing. Um, so, yeah, you got to watch out for anything that doesn't have the brand name on it, like the Mojang. This is probably one of the ones that you'll get caught real fast. 
Uh, this yeah, you showed that in one of your videos that it's very yeah. ordinary looking. Yeah, Jinx. Look for the tag right here. Okay. Uh, Jinx the Mojang. If it just says made in China or it has no tag or it has window hangers. Window hangers are giveaway that just made from China. So yeah, just watch that, out. That little little like plastic that. thing that looks like a question mark is that window hangers that we're talking about? No, it's actually it actually like a suction cup. Oh, a suction a cup. A lot of the okay. the um China things they put like window suction cups. At oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, yeah, I wish so I had was... to show you, but yeah, I just put them all away. Okay. But yeah, they're okay. weird. They just have a weird suction cup, and they're on Yoshi's. They're on Super Mario Brothers. I mean, yeah. So on the counterfeits, that's what they do. They put those those suction cups. Yeah. Every everywhere. once in a while, yeah, they'll just put a suction cup for some reason. Okay. Well, that makes sense. I wasn't aware of that. Okay. So. <laughs> yeah. That's a pro tip. There you go. Uh, you also told me, we talked earlier, you said about unusual sales. And you said that typically General Disney Plus is sell for a lot of money. Why is that? Um, there's so many out there. I mean, you can find 100,000 Mickeys and then you find one little Mickey dog. Or I think Minnie has a dog. So dog or a cat. Okay. Whatever. Okay. You find like one out of 100 or even 1,000. So of course, you, when you see Mini, you want to see the you want to get the cat. You don't want to get the the Mini because the Mini is going to sell for fifteen dollars. The cat's going to sell for one hundred and fifty dollars. So, yeah, anytime you you get to the main characters of Disney and stuff like that, um, like Toy Story, you don't want the Woody and you don't want the 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 girl. I forget her name. You want like the Bo Peep. You want the Forky. Well, they're kind of mass producing Forky now, but um, just the odd different characters. Um, always sell much better than the the normal everyday characters. So is that kind of like the normal day everyday characters are different? I mean, if you find like a rainbow suited Woody, I mean that's going to go for two three hundred dollars because there's you don't see them out there. But yeah, most of the time, find the odd characters. The odd characters sell way better than the normal characters. Okay, so that's kind of like with used clothing. You know, it's a commodity. There's so much so much competition out there. That the people are kind of like you know lowering the prices, trying to get the get the things to turn over quickly, so there's not a lot of profit involved in it. Yeah, like yeah, if I guess you find like an Disney's... Nietzsche shirt that came from Walmart, uh, you're gonna get fifteen dollars for it. But you find one in a concert that's from one year that they've only been there once, you're gonna sell those for a few hundred dollars. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, the, sing the single stitch t-shirts, concert t-shirts, yeah. sure, absolutely, absolutely. Okay. Uh, also, another thing I, I learned a little little bit about it. Um, I know that Build a Bear typically doesn't sell very well. It's not very valuable in general. Are there a few that we should look for that are possibly more valuable? Uh, a lot of the Pokemon. Um, a lot of the again different. You find the brown bears. I sell those on my website every for twenty dollars. Pretty much one brown bear every week or so. Uh, but yeah, you have to look for the Pokemon. There's a lot of good ones. There's Paw Patrol. There's a lot of good ones out there. I just sold a little chipmunk. I mean, I only sold it for 20 bucks again, but uh, yeah, anything different. If I had the chipmunk clothing and everything, it would sell for a lot more money. But yeah, just again, different Different is key for plush. It's not the brand name. Um, brand names really do not go well with plush. It's, it's because a kid lost it. A kid damaged it. A kid it got ran over. Um, the dog ate it, so they're looking to replace okay. what what they lost. And if it's more rare, you can charge more money because you're the only one up there. Uh, there's a lot of my listings that I'm the only one up there, or I'm one out of five or one out of six. Okay. I mean, I sell like circus circus animals, which is just midway midway trash. <laughs> I'll put it that way. It's just trash but people want it because their kid is yelling in their ear right now hey, i lost my circus circus whatever and I'll, you say, I'll, you're saying circus circus you're talking like vegas casino you're talking like yeah out the to... vegas casino like okay, the, the okay. midway there okay. yeah i have circus circus reno all that they okay. do all their special um six flag magic mountain okay uh, of course cedar fair all those places have their own special plush that they like you play the game you throw the ball you win the plush and there's not a lot of those out there. And if people don't list them, I'll list them and make the money off of it. Okay. You had also mentioned, uh, and I, I'm having a brain freeze here. What was the, you're talking about the things like for the uh, National uh, Welfare Association, different thing. What was the, the, the type of brand that you were talking about that does those? You do very well with those. Uh, 
Uh, we just re- just had a recent video about the uh, the company that produces those. I'm not sure what I was, which one it was. <laughs> you, you were, you were <laughs> too many different videos. Animals and different. Um, okay, maybe maybe I. Yeah, <laughs> not sure what video which one. That's I did fine. a ton of top twenty videos and. Okay. Yeah, that was yeah. It was one of the top, your top twenty videos. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I don't. No problem. Okay. Uh, what else here? We're talking about build a bear. Oh, um, can you, again, this is, this is more like a, a general kind of question. Can you tell us how to determine if you should buy the plush that has stains on it? And, uh, how, how would you typically clean your plush? Do you have a special, uh, cleaning supplies that you use or is there a process? How, how do you do that? Um, well, again, I have a video on cleaning, uh, the plush, but, uh, most of the time, if it's completely white. I might not even pick it up. Uh, there's, okay. there's like this. There's, there's Olaf, which is a pain. Uh, Hello Kitty that I've talked about earlier. A lot of these guys, if they are they have a black spot or really deep, I won't even pick it up. It's just too much of a pain to wash. But um, anything that's not fully, fully white, I will go ahead and actually just throw it in the wash machine. I use the Awesome Cleaner or... Um, uh, whatever laundry detergent or stain remover that I have, I just spray it on there, let it sit overnight if it's really bad, and just wash them in the washing uh, wash machine. I actually purchased a huge washer so I could do this. I could wash a big plush if I want to. Uh, I purchased a huge washing machine because when I started doing plush. So um, I can just spray them up and throw them in there. If they're okay. really bad, like smoke-filled, you're going to have to do that by hand. I had one that... I guess was in an office with a smoker. He was uh, an old guy, Hagar. If you remember that old cartoon. Yeah, sure, clip. absolutely, sure, yeah. Oh yeah, I knew he was worth some money. Oh yeah, so, you think that would be, yeah, sure. So I had to do him by hand. I had to wash him with dish soap and uh, was it baking powder. I had to wash him about ten times before I got all the yellow and orange out of him. It was completely disgusting, but he turned out fine and he sold. I don't remember what I got for him, but he sold and had no complaints. Oh yeah, a lot of work, but <laughs> yeah, I, I don't <laughs> if know. The plush is worth it. It's worth it. Yeah, I don't know if Beth resell robots in the chat, but I, I know a lot of clothing resellers. There's tricks about putting things in to to try to get this the smoke smell out. I don't. I don't. I don't if I said something that smells. Yeah, smoke, I, I use the baking powder and usually by hand and. Yeah, and the, the awesome cleaner is is the dollar twenty five tree. Yeah, you know? that's it now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Soon to be $1.50 tree, probably yeah, soon. Oh, yeah, it's, it, is, it is what it is, <laughs> right? tree next year. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, so we had, so other questions was for you was, was about shipping. I want to get a little bit into the shipping. And um, there's all kinds of sizes of plushes. And uh, can you tell us about the various shipping services you use? And, uh, I mean, larger things, do you use UPS or FedEx? And uh, you also told me that you're using the... Uh, pirate ship you're using a simple export rate you just ship something that's china you said earlier in the show yeah it's the first one i've shipped in china in a long time uh, i don't remember what it was i think it was an action figure i just shipped out to china um, haven't had any problems with any shipping pretty much at all there was one that was lost for like two months and the guy got it i think that was in sri lanka or something and the guy finally got it, and he actually sent me uh, PayPal with uh, for the money because I already refunded him because it was it was gone for like three four months. Right. And yeah, he he sent me the money back, and I was super happy because I already refunded him. He didn't have to do nothing. But yeah, pirate ship is the the best way to to ship. Um, if you have problems, pirate ship usually usually right there, and we'll help you through it. Um, but like I said, I rarely have any problems. I've been shipping a lot to Mexico lately. Uh, Mexico has been around 10 to 20 percent of my sales in the last month or so, mm-hmm. which is surprising. I usually hardly ever see anything from Mexico. It's usually Canada and Japan, but yeah, Mexico has been doing very well and still and the, haven't the, had any problems. The simple export rate is competitive to ship to Canada and also to Mexico, correct? Oh, simple export rate is way cheaper than that I've ever found. Now, what, what about like larger, larger plush? Do you, do you ship them? Uh, do you use FedEx or do you use UPS or how do you? No, I you? use uh, actually I use Pirate Ship, the the box and bag method. I okay. Get this guy and squeeze the snot out of it and put in the smallest <laughs> bag possible. Uh, I actually got I was a thirty six inch Cookie Monster into a small bag. I actually put it under my leg 
and squishing out all the air, and I taped it shut, and I got him out. <laughs> I was going to ask you as a trick today. You had to put it underneath your leg and squish it. I put it, it under right. my well, leg and well, sat on well, it and squished the snot out of it. Uh-huh. I'm not <laughs> and doing that. it out. <laughs> It's a friend of yours, I guess, Pam, uh, Pamela. Hey, Pamela. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, I, that was another. I guess, I guess you do you ever get involved with that? Like, I I'm, I'm, probably don't, but I mean, like, vacuum, put a vacuum tube in and it's nah, like, yeah, I don't bother. That. My leg don't bother works good. <laughs> your leg works good. Go, well, yeah, your leg, leg works good. Mine. I just smashed the, like I said, I smashed the snot out of my mouth. The only ones you can't do it is like these because it has the, the like the, the styrofoam pellets in it. So okay. if you smash these, oh, that'll uh, damage it. Sure. will go yeah. down too. But you just get him as tight as possible and get him in a smaller bag. But right. he'll probably go in like an eighteen by eighteen bag, which is the largest you can go. But okay. you can you can move the stuffing around a little bit on him. But yeah, well, he's actually super light. He might even go sixteen ounces. Okay, guys, were there any other questions for Robert? Uh, a couple other things I want to talk about, but uh, I want to make sure we answer any questions you have. Uh, uh, on I have a lot of opportunities to have the plush king on. So I uh, want to have any, if there yeah, are any before questions. I melt, it's like 104 away. Yeah, before he melts. Yeah. Robert, Robert's basically in the desert in California. So he's, he's melting there. And uh, if you have any questions, just put a cue in front of him. I'll be monitoring the chat uh, for Robert. Uh, in the meantime, why don't you just talk a little bit. I, I told you we were going to do predominantly a plush, but just touch on toys a little bit. Maybe give the chat an opportunity to put a couple of questions in about plush or toys for, for that matter. And action figures. Why don't you just tell us a little bit about, what to look for in action figures and toys when we're out there? Um, well, actually, I don't really know what to look for. Okay. <laughs> I just got a supplier. That makes two of us. The supplier gives me what, what okay. he has, and um, I have no choice in the matter. <laughs> I've, uh, I purchased or I buy it really, really inexpensively. Um, like I purchased the last one, I think it was $3,800, and I got a full truckload of toys and I actually still have a box right here that I'm going through, but uh, I'll show you some of the stuff I've got. A couple of items. They've got like huge, nice figures, and um, yeah, I I don't choose this stuff. He just sends it to me, and uh, I got, like I said, I got 38 boxes full of this stuff, and yeah, <laughs> oh yeah, I'm just barely getting into action figures. I just started last okay. year. I met my toy guy last year, and he yeah, I wanted, wanted to bring that up an actual, another toy guy. So, yeah, I want to bring that up, guys. I, we mentioned earlier about networking and becoming friendly with the thrift store managers and the thrift store employees. And you know, like Robert had said earlier, that he he was friendly with the uh, the GameStop manager, and he turned him on to the liquidation guy, and he got hooked up. Uh, that's basically how you got hooked up with your your toy guy. Why don't you tell us a little uh, yeah, bit about how that happened? Just talking to people. I mean, I. Um, was actually talking to Casey. Casey came up to me and said, Hey, I got this toy guy. Casey, um, the rock star flipper, who's a yeah. mutual friend of Robert and I, right? Yeah, I met him at the Boss Reseller Remix. Um, so um, he got in touch with this person that sells toys. It was close to me. He couldn't deal with it because it was just too much to ship to him in sure. Florida. So sure. um, I was only a few miles, well, a few miles, it's like two hours away. Right, right. right. So I was only a few miles away from him. So Started talking, got this toy guy, and this toy guy introduced me to another toy guy that does so mostly the Marvel. Okay. Yeah, I went from Star Wars and Simpsons and Kiss memorabilia to um, Batman, Superman, Aquaman. Yeah, I, I'll talk to anybody anytime, and as long as you're nice to people and get your name out, start talking to people. I Have mean, business cards is important too. Yeah, I have two different business cards, one for my YouTube channel, one for uh, business. The plushgamesandmore.com is my website. If you ever want to check out my eBay store, just I mean just yeah, and your, your eBay store is in the in the description of the video as well, the link, okay? And also your YouTube channel. Uh Wendy says uh, one hit is to see what movies are out or coming out and get the characters that go with that show. That's true. Yeah, too. like Despicable Me came out. I usually raise the prices on my uh, toys when the movie's coming out, and this time I sure. missed it. <laughs> this time I missed it. I sold one that probably was going to go for like 35 I sold it for, I think it was 17 But yeah, anytime you see a new show coming out, um, your stuff's going to start flying off the shelf. Uh, Garfield right now is selling like crazy for me. I don't know if there's a new show co- that okay. came out or something. Uh, but yeah, I think there's a new movie coming out. That's what's going on. 
Um, there's a new actor that's doing the voice instead of Bill Murray. It's somebody uh, else. Oh, okay. I got so you. there's a new actor. So people are heard Garfield in the news again. So all my Garfield stuff has been flying off the shelf. Uh, well, so Despicable Me, all those. I and the new movies come out. The Marvel when the new Marvel movies come out. Yeah, the Marvel movies. I got a. I purchased. Um, I found some on uh, retail arbitrage. Some of the Black Panther or the Black was the Black Panther mask. Yes, that, that's the the guy coming out. Uh, right. Well, the next yeah, that's guy coming out. They're coming yeah. out. Yeah. So I, I have I think like ten or fifteen masks coming in because okay. you know, Halloween's coming out. That's coming out. That's perfect timing to sure. jack up the price <laughs> and make some money. Absolutely. Uh, a question was, and I, I, I we discussed this before, but basically, how do you finance the big the buyouts? Uh, and that's obviously everyone's different and not different opportunities, but. You just basically you're putting aside money. money from your from, yeah you're putting aside money from your retail but you're doing so much resale business that you're putting I mean, aside. In the beginning, yeah. it was actually credit cards. I would. Um, well, I, would I, I would with, recommend that. You be no, careful I'm with very cards. good at credit cards. Um, okay. I had right. when I was flipping houses, I had a good stack of thirty credit cards. Okay. So I had immaculate credit. I had an eight twenty. Okay. So what I would do is I would buy well because I was I lost one hundred fifty thousand dollars in one year when the housing market mm. crashed. So I had everything on credit. So what I would do to, because I needed money, I would buy it. Like when I bought the jewelry place, I think it was eight thousand dollars. I put it on one credit card. I had a balance transfer. It cost me two percent, and I got a whole year to pay for it. I had to do it one more time, and it went to I think it was Discover, and Discover had no transfer fee, so I got an extra month. So I finally wound up paying for it. But yeah. I've learned the credit card game, and right, so you I'm know the very good okay. at it. Okay. I pay yes, almost but... zero interest on it. Yeah, you, you got to be careful with credit card guys. Yeah, you have to watch out. <laughs> they're, they're they're a trap. I mean, I mean, I have I have very good credit too because I don't buy a lot of things, but I mean, I, and I pay monthly. In fact, I, I started doing auto pay because. I, yeah, you know, I pay them off every month now. But when yeah. I was when I was in the hole, I, I needed to yeah. figure them out. Yeah. And, there's a lot of places where you just get an extra month. You just transfer it over for free and you get an extra month to pay. And I've done that a few times. Like I said, I had a ton of credit cards when I was flipping houses. Right. Uh, Angela says, I sell a lot of stuff I get free from Craigslist. Okay. And when people pay me to take yard sale leftovers to a landfill on my truck. Okay. That, yeah, there, nice. there again, that's where you have the business cards and you can you can put on a Google voice phone number. You don't have to put your your regular cell phone number, but it's going to come to your cell phone number. Yeah, you and can then, put that on. You can put like Facebook uh, Marketplace. You can put a whole bunch of things. You just ask, say, hey, I, I deal in toys. Sell me your toys or you want to get rid of your toys. Email me and just go pick them up. Right. Okay. I, it wasn't that fun. There's a lot of people <laughs> that just you call and it's like, yeah, I have the stuff. And that's it. That's it. That's it. <laughs> right. You still have it. You still have it. You still have it. How many messages yeah, you get for like, that, right? <laughs> they just disappeared. What happened? The phone number changed? <laughs> right, 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 right. I, I put it in our, our, our show notes. Uh, you probably may recall off the top of your head. What Do you recall what your biggest flip was or your, your most, you know, the least you paid and your really, really huge flip you made on something? Uh, my biggest flip was uh, 400 and, well, cards-wise, um, it was a, I think it, it was like three thousand dollars. I had the series one of Garbage Pails Kids. I think that's what it finally went out. Okay, it's for, cards, for okay. thirty, thirty five hundred or three thousand. I actually did it on Courtney's channel. They had like a challenge. Started okay. the item off at a dollar, and see how it went. I think it finally wound up being thirty five hundred, something like that. Wow. Okay. Plush wise, um, there was a Mickey Mouse memories. There was a Steamboat Mickey Mouse. It's gray and. Really nice. That one sold for four hundred and fifty dollars. How old was that? Uh, the Mick, the Mickey Mouse Memories came out. Yeah. I think about five years ago. Oh, is that all it was? Okay, and it sold for four hundred dollars. Yeah, so for, wow. sold for four hundred and fifty dollars. It just came out, and they sold out super fast. So it was wanted. So it was like a lim limited edition type of thing. Yeah, yeah, they were all limited edition. They oh, okay, had a okay. series one through twelve. It was oh, okay. every month they would put out a different color Mickey Mouse. So. They still sell for pretty good money, and once I started selling those, I would actually buy them off eBay because a lot of people just, hey, it's a plush. I'll throw it for twenty bucks. I bought so many of them, flipped them for three, four hundred dollars. It was crazy. I that? do that a lot on plush. I mean, I have this um, a few items in my house that I will just 
go on eBay every once in a while. And if someone has it real low, I'll just buy it. And I have them listed for $250. And I've purchased maybe five or six of them for less than 50 bucks. Right. Well, that's something you can flip from eBay to eBay or flip from uh, yeah. you know, Mike, Mike and Randy to Walmart, Pop. buy on eBay or yeah, flip yeah. on Walmart. Yep. Absolutely. And I've cornered the market on a few plush. I hate to tell you. <laughs> you're, you're, the, you're the plushy king. That's why. <laughs> okay. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your, your YouTube channel and uh, the type of videos you do and uh, just tell people that don't know you a little bit about your, your YouTube channel. Uh, well, I do a what's sold video every single week. I tell you my exact numbers on eBay, uh, what sells, what doesn't sell. Uh, I go through all my act. Well, not all of them because there's uh, I sell like a hundred items a week. I can't go through all of them unless you want to watch uh, hour plus video. But I try to I try to mix in a whole bunch of different interesting items that I've sold through the week. Whether it's action figures, whether it's towels, I mean pillows games I, I pretty much show it all and of course i show a bunch of my plush show what it sells every single week on my channel um, i try to do a top 20 video where i go through different uh, brands or companies and i try to pull out uh, the top 20 sales um, well that items are sold for so i do that video once a week at least i try to and then i usually do a haul video whether it's action figures or a plush haul video or just get a mystery bag, go through it with you uh, and tell you basically what I think it's going to sell for or what I'll list it for. And you can tell me where I'm wrong or right. <laughs> uh, Cause I'm always going to look at anyhow. I'll, I'll always research a little bit when I'm not completely sure what it's going to go for. But those are my three <laughs> videos that I do almost every single week. At least I try yeah. to keep up. Yeah. You, you have a lot of videos on your channel. So guys, if you want to ask questions, last minute you can ask them a couple questions for Robert, and uh, just want to uh, kind of clean things up a little bit. And I, I tell you, people all the time, I have the uh, my my guest information in the description section of the video, so I do have Robert's eBay stores. So if you want to learn a little bit about how he lists his plush and uh, his toys and what type of things he's selling, his stores listed. If you want to buy something from Robert, I mean, you, can, you want to I'll contact tell, me I'll, directly. I'll, I'll answer your questions directly. I, okay. I'm on uh, Facebook. You can message me. I'm in Instagram. I mean, I'm pretty much open to anybody. <laughs> People contact me all the time, and uh, I'm not I'm not shy. I'll talk to you. I'll tell you whether it's a good buy, a bad buy, or just, just remember life. that. Just remember, Robert's in California, and he's a night owl because it's so hot where he lives that he yeah. works. He works in, in the middle I'm of the not night. Answering basically. Your, your question till one p.m. <laughs> my so, time. So. Yeah, so yeah, so Robert's Robert's not up till like uh, four p.m. Eastern because it's yeah, so hot. Yeah. Don't message me and expect a message back. <laughs> right. So and it, that's 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 I learned that from Robert. That it's so hot where he lives that he's got to work in the middle of the night, and he's a so he's a night owl. So that's yeah. Uh, I have like everything all covered because like i said it's 104 right now and air conditioning is going but in this corner it's just super hot <laughs> gotcha okay guys so uh anyway uh if you're enjoying my channel i want to getting value from it, please consider helping me offset some of the costs i uh, would greatly appreciate it i have to purchase equipment pay for subscriptions and of course like anything else there's time and effort involved uh trying to bring you guys good educational content um i have buy me a coffee paypal cash app and also I have a link to Randy's website, who I mentioned earlier, uh, fakesix.com. You can buy coffee, tea, spices, and old-fashioned candy from Randy. Uh, if you're kind enough, uh, you just put an AE when you're registered on the site, and Randy will pay me a commission at no cost to you guys, and it helps me out as well. So uh, anyway, I'd like to say that time is your most valuable asset. I'd like to thank Robert for his time, and also those of you here for the live and watching the replay. And uh, if you can, leave a thumbs up, subscribe turn notifications on and if you leave a comment that helps the channel as well so we will be looking for another guest for next wednesday guys appreciate y'all being here have a happy and uh, safe holiday labor day weekend and we shall see you next wednesday at 7 p.m eastern take care, take care everybody all. bye